Hello, Facebook land. Allie here and Oliver, my trusty sidekick. You can almost see him. He's sleeping, which is what babies should do. Um, I promised you to meet new friends today. Today's friends are the chickens. Can you see them? There we go. Say hello to the chickens. There's Betty and Wilma, and I'm just kidding. We don't name them chickens. They just produce eggs. <laughs> um, I'm here from the backyard, the back 40 as we call it. It's actually not 40 acres, but we're gonna call it 40 because it's funnier that way. Um, there's the back of the pasture. There's the chickens all around. Hey Ariel, how are you? Let's see, oh, there's the back of our house. Need some landscaping. We'll work on that later. Um, hey Mimi. And my mom who's feeding the chickens so that they'll hang out with me because we're not best friends yet. So welcome to live Q&A with the chickens as I'm calling it. I thought today I would focus on questions other than from the audience, which I'm happy to take. You're welcome to put your comments in the message section. Um, on pets, because I get a lot of questions. I do a lot of planning for people with pets. I have three cats, Spock, Finn, and Lily. And they were my original babies before I had Henry and then this baby. And so I thought I'd do a couple questions there. One of them is, um, what do I do with my pets if I'm not here? How do I plan for them? What are my options? And really there are so many options that you can um, put in place from really simple, which is just giving your pets to someone via handwritten note or you know handshake deal to setting up a pet trust. And what your situation needs is really dependent on you know what you want to accomplish and how many people you have in your life and how much money you have and who do you trust to make the right decisions. So I would say explore your options, consider how big your pets are, how expensive they are to care for and who you're leaving them to because you can't just give a horse to your friend who lives in Sun City and expect them to have the resources to care for that horse if that's not really what they're good at. So consider who you're giving the gift to and what kind of gift it is. Hey, um, Senor Rupain is joining us. Nice to see you. I guess I can't really see any of you, but you know, you're there. So I appreciate you watching. The next question I get for a lot of my horse owners, and I have a fair number of horse clients since I'm familiar with the horse industry and rode three-day eventing for most of my childhood, was how much money should I leave with my horses? So if you give a gift, let's big, big old air quotes around the word gift, gift of horses to your friend or someone else, um, how much money do you leave with them? And my standard answer is, it depends, which no one likes. So then I'll go into how much does it cost for you to care for that animal for a year? And then how much, how long do you think that animal, that horse will live and sort of calculate it that way? Because you want to make sure that the, the animals are well taken care of if you're gone and your friend or whoever else needs to care for them. The next big question is, can't I just leave the horses to um, a welfare organization, horse rescue? My answer is always no. And there's so many wonderful organizations, but they just can't handle you, quote unquote, donating a horse and expecting them to be able to cover the costs of that horse or find them a new home. Now, if you want to work with a specific organization, leave your horse with some instructions and some money, maybe worth exploring. I know there's lots of welfare organizations. Some, um, the Placer SPCA has a Circle of Hope program for pet owners, not for horses, cats and dogs primarily. They'll work with you, but it's really a good idea to check in and actually have a conversation with that organization before you just leave them your pets. Honestly, the worst thing you could do is not have any instructions. I can't tell you the number of really sad cases that I've heard about where um, someone dies and they don't leave any instructions, including the name of the animals. The family doesn't know what they're supposed to do and they just sort of take them to the SPCA and drop them off. And um, that organization sort of left to figure out what this animal needs and what they, what their, you know, medical history is and what do they eat. And so kind of sad and don't do that. Write down your things. Hi, Diane. Oh, I'll miss you working out. Also that too. Miss working out. Um, so that's the animal conversation. If you have an estate plan, you don't necessarily need to make your wishes, you know, a really integral part of your trust necessarily. If you are just sort of rotating animals like chickens, like, am I going to leave these chickens in my estate plan? Um, one, no, cause they're not mine. They're my mom's. And two, um, 
you know, you probably get rid of chickens. So you can say something like all of my animals or, you know, my chickens, unless you have a pet chicken, in which case, I mean, I guess you could leave your pet chicken to someone. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> um, so primary things to do if you have pets in an estate plan or pets and no estate plan. One, write down your wishes. Where do you want the pet to go? How much money you'd like to go with the pet? And then name backups. Who would take that pet or those pets if the first person you've nominated is not available? Um, maybe a third person, always a good idea. And then lastly, pretend you're going on a trip, vacation, and you're gonna leave instructions of how to care for your animals. Put that with your estate plan. Where's their vet? What's their food? Um, you know, all of those sorts of things that would be helpful for them. Hey, Stephanie. Um, so that they could care for your pets. So pretend you're going on vacation, write it down, put it with your estate plan. Oh, and lastly, one tip I got from Leilani at the SPCA uh, when I gave a talk was really helpful is contact your vet and let them know who your emergency contact is if you're out of town so that if they needed to take your pet to the vet, they would know who they're talking to and know that they have authorization to provide care to your animals. So thanks, Stephanie, that is a good idea. <laughs> I like it when people agree with me. So that's today's pet conversation. If you have pets, please feel free to share this with your friends, your family, whoever else you think might be um, in need of some services. I have a couple blog posts on pets. I care about them deeply. I wanna make sure that um, they're cared for as well as your family members that you leave behind. Um, and with that, let me see if I can show you Oliver because everyone, sometimes people just show up to see Oliver. And he is pretty cute right now. He's like six weeks old, hold on. There we go, oh, that didn't work well. There we go, there's Oliver. He is um, a pretty good sleeper and a good eater. And um, we're enjoying spending time with him. Kind of bummed we're stuck, not going anywhere, but actually when you live in a place like this, it's kind of okay that you can't go anywhere. You just hang out. So feel free to email the, the office if you have any questions, info at gofflegal.com. Happy to set up an appointment to chat about you, your pets, whatever, estate planning, answer questions. I think next time I'm going to do a Q&A on what happens if you have the unhappy job of being nominated as trustee or executor because there are so many things that people are worried about and um, hopefully I can help and get some people some answers. Alrighty, tuning out for today. I will see you guys next Wednesday at noon. If you have any questions, leave them in the box here or on my Facebook page or info at Golf Legal and I'll be happy to answer them next week. Alrighty, bye.